from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Gene Crane and Dan Daly in You're My Everything. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Twenty-five years ago, I was right in the midst of those turbulent days in Hollywood when silent movies were changing over to sound. In fact, it was my privilege to make the first feature-length talking picture at the 20th Century Fox Studio. And in tonight's play from that studio, we'll bring you a love story of those days. You're my everything. And as our stars of this musical comedy drama, we have Dan Daly in his original role of the song and dance man. And that charming actress, Jean Crane. You're my everything. Now, You're My Everything, starring Jean Crane as Hannah Adams and Dan Daly as Tim O'Connor. <laughs> Boston, 1924, at the Belmont Theatre, a matinee performance is underway, and for the fifth time in two weeks, a pretty young lady named Hannah Adams is in the audience. Believe me, the show isn't that good, but there's an affable young man on the stage named Tim O'Connor. Here is the drag, see how it goes, down on the heels, up on the toes, that's the way to do the varsity drag. Hotter than hot, newer than new, meaner than mean and bluer than blue, gets as much applause as waving a flag. You can pass many a class, whether you're dumb or wise, if you all answer the call when your professor cries. Everybody down on the heels, up on the toes, stay after school, learn how it goes, everybody do the varsity drag. It's an hour later. The performance is over and outside the theater, here's Hannah Adams again, waiting for the rain to let up. Gesundheit. Oh. I only said Gesundheit. Well, y yes. Well, thank you, Mr. O'Connor. You know me? Oh, no. No, I, I don't really, but I... I just saw this show, and, and I think you're... Well, well, honestly, I think it's simply, simply... You should have brought your umbrella. Yes. Speaking of umbrellas, do you know a place around here a fellow can get a good steak dinner? Well, no, not, not exactly. Maybe some nice seafood? Spaghetti, even. Anything, just as long as it isn't baked beans. Baked beans? Oh, not that I have anything against your famous Boston baked beans, you understand, but why, they're the bulwark of our civilization. But after three weeks of a steady diet... Achoo! You better go home and soak your feet in a hot mustard bath. Well, be nice seeing you. Wait, wait, I I do know a place where they serve a good home-cooked dinner. Oh? I'd be glad to show you if you like. I like. Well, I, I, I'm i just going in that direction. Well, there's no sign of a taxi. Is it very far? Not if you don't mind walking. It, it's in Louisburg Square. Louisburg Square? Oh, but I know a shortcut. Come on, <laughs> this way, Mr. O'Connor. Look, are you sure there's a place around here to eat? This doesn't look much like a restaurant neighborhood. Where are we, anyhow? Louisburg. Louisburg? You mean we're not even in Boston? Well, I mean, this is Louisburg Square. Oh, ritzy, huh? Well, the people who live here think this is just about all there is to Boston. Yeah? Well, how much farther is this restaurant? Well, well, this is it, right here. This? But this looks like somebody's house. Hey, uh... Kind of expensive, isn't it? Oh, no. No, it, it isn't at all expensive. But but to tell you the truth... Oh. Well, aren't you coming in? Oh, good evening, Father. Good evening, dear. Father? Father, this is Mr. O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor? My father, Professor Adams. Oh, well, it's uh, nice to know you, Professor Adams. Mr. O'Connor is having dinner with us tonight, Father. Really? Well, splendid, splendid. Come in, Mr. O'Connor. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, if you'll let me have your hat... Tell Mother I'll be right in, Hannah. This joint looks okay. Oh, good evening, Mother. Uh, good evening, dear. Mother, this is Mr. O'Connor. 
He's going to stay and have dinner with us. Oh, well, we're very happy to have you, Mr. O'Connor. Thank you. It's very nice to be here. Father will be right in. Uh, yes, dear. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And this is my Aunt Jane from Salem. Where the witches come from. <laughs> Good evening, young man. Good evening. Oh, uh, will you excuse me for just a minute? I'll be right back. Don't be long, dear. Dinner's almost ready. Oh, uh, tell Elizabeth to set another plate. Yes, Mother. Well, Mr. O'Connor, did you go to the symphony this afternoon, too? The uh, symphony? Why, well, yes, that's where Hannah's been. Didn't she tell you? No, she didn't mention it. That's strange. The symphony seems to be the only thing Hannah's interested in lately. As a matter of fact, Mr. O'Connor, I'm the only unmusical one in the entire family. Like General Grant, I know only two tunes. One is Yankee Doodle, and the other one isn't. <laughs> there. You see, I told you I wouldn't be very long. We were just about to discuss music, dear. Yes, your mother was wondering how you enjoyed the symphony this afternoon. Oh. She was surprised that you hadn't mentioned it. Perhaps Hannah didn't mention it because she wasn't there. Wasn't there? Perhaps she was at the Belmont Theater again. Oh, Aunt Jane. But, but how did you know? I'm not exactly a recluse. I saw you there last Saturday ogling Mr. O'Connor here along with the rest of the flappers. No kidding? How'd you like the show? A young man, you're a guest in my brother's house. I prefer not to answer that. So, you're an actor, Mr. O'Connor. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that, sir. He's what they call a hooper. How, uh, how interesting. Well, we, we were just standing there, and, and Mr. O'Connor asked me if, if I knew a good place where he could get a steak. And... A what? Well, yes? it was raining, Mrs. Adams, you see, and, and I he, would... he said he was tired of eating. <laughs> and you know how it is in a strange town. And besides, Mother, you're always talking about Boston hospitality, and, and I just thought it would be sort of nice to... Bring him home. Yes, dear, of course, but well, I... Well, I suppose I ought to apologize, Mrs. Adams, but you see, I really thought that this was a restaurant. A restaurant? Yeah. A, a place where you eat. Oh. Well, I can't see that any great harm's been done. Hannah appears to have behaved very humanly, if not properly, while Mr. O'Connor here... Is guilty of trying to get himself a good dinner for nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that about covers it. Oh, well, it, it's quite all right, I suppose. Oh, yes, indeed. Glad to have you. Uh, dinner is served, Mrs. Adams. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, this way, Mr. O'Connor, and I do hope you like Boston baked beans. Oh, yes. Uh, beans? <laughs> oh, Mother. Yes, dear? Nothing, I guess. Longer, well, I'm sorry, too, yeah. Professor Eaton Run, but you know how it is. The show must go on. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, thank you all for a very nice dinner. Oh, well, glad you could be with us. Oh, oh, I had a hat, didn't I? It's right here, Mr. O'Connor. Oh, your hat. Oh. oh, thank you. You had it. It's still a little damp. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, would you step outside for a minute? I want to give you a piece of advice. Advice? Oh, look, it, it stopped raining. In the future, you'd better be careful, see? I mean, about the kind of guys you pick up. Oh? First thing you know, you're going to bump into one of these cads that'll try and date you up for lunch tomorrow. Well, will you? <laughs> will I what? Have lunch with me tomorrow. Oh, but I, I couldn't possibly do that. What time? Twelve o'clock. Oh, I, I don't think my mother would let me. Where? Copley Plaza. Oh, yeah, and another thing. You'd better watch your step, or one of those fresh guys might even lose his head and try and kiss you goodnight. Like this. Oh, thank you. For, for warning me. Yeah. I feel a lot better now. Good night, Hannah. Good night, Tim. You just can't have lunch with me and rush right off. Besides, I have a surprise for you. Come on, we're going in this store. The music store? What for? You never knew I made a phonograph record, did you? Tim. Oh, well, it's nothing much, really. It's just a record. Oh, I can't wait to buy it. What song did you sing? Well, take it easy. Maybe they don't even carry it. Maybe they're all sold out. <laughs> well, let's find out.
How do you like it? Terrific, huh? Only record I ever made. Oh, it's wonderful, but I I can't tell which which one of the singers is you. Well, keep your shirt on, you'll hear it. I'll tell you when. Oh, that, uh, that corsage. Be sure and put it in the icebox when you get home. You can wear it again when we go out to dinner tonight. Oh, Tim, I can't. We always go to Uncle Edward's Thursday night. Uncle Edward's? We've been going to Uncle Edward's every Thursday night for, for years. Well, just think of what a relief it'll be for Uncle Edward when you don't show up. I'll pick you up at 6.30. But I can't, Tim. I, I shouldn't. Really, I, I just... Shh. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Here it comes. Here. This is me. Wait a minute. Right now. Because I love you. Well... How'd you like me? Oh, it's beautiful. I do the same phrase solo again a little while later on. Now, uh, about tonight. Tim, please, let me listen. I want to hear you again. Yeah. You know, I can't understand why this record didn't sell better. Tim, hadn't you better go now? Your taxi's waiting. Okay. Oh, I left a ticket at the theater for you for tomorrow's matinee. I won't be there tomorrow, Tim. Oh, be there? But tomorrow's our last matinee. We're closing Saturday night. I I just think we shouldn't see each other again. Hey, what is this? Well, you said yourself it can't mean anything, that we live in two different worlds. Well, yes, we do, but... Then, then what are we arguing about? Well, all I'm saying is I don't see why we can't go on seeing each other as long as I'm here. I'd just rather not, Tim. Then you want this to be goodbye? Well, isn't it? Will you kiss me goodnight? If you really want me to. I don't suppose I have to tell you how swell it's been knowing you. Goodbye, Tim. Yeah. So long, Hannah. And Jane. Well? Well, I think it's very nice of you inviting me here for afternoon tea, but... Speak up, Hannah. What are you trying to say? Well, you keep looking around as if you're expecting somebody else. Yeah, I most certainly am. And there he is. Oh, no. The no. Mrs. Adams, I presume. Good afternoon. Oh, Tim. I was beginning to think you hadn't got my note. Carrying it right here next to my heart. How are you, Hannah? Well, I'm fine, but I, I'm... What would you like? We're having tea and crumpets. I'll have tea and crumpets, so help me. Waiter? Waiter? The gentleman will have the same. Well, I suppose you're wondering what this is all about. You can't shoot a man for wondering. Very well, Mr. O'Connor. Just what are your intentions toward my niece? Aunt Jane. My what? You've been seeing her constantly. Up until the night before last. Either your intentions are honorable or they aren't. Certainly they're honorable, but... But you don't want to marry her? Oh, Aunt Jane, I, I could just... Yes or no? Well, I don't know. Well, that is not exactly... Not exactly. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean not, not exactly. I, I just... Before you get any highfalutin notions, young man, let me tell you something about this girl. She's an 11th generation Bostonian. Seven of her male ancestors in a straight line, including the two that came over from the Mayflower, were ministers of the gospel. The other four were professors of Greek at Harvard. Aunt Jane, he's not interested in that. Look at her. Any fool can see that she was cut out to marry a man of family and position. Well, that's exactly what I told her. Are you going to tell me that you're such a man? Oh, I certainly am not. My grandfather was an Irish cop. Irish? <laughs> yes, and my mother and father, now that they're retired from the stage, run a sort of a pay-as-you-go theatrical boarding house in Jersey City. And yet you deliberately set out to make this child fall in love with you with a background like that? Now, wait a minute. You've got a lot of nerve talking about me and my background. Maybe my family don't have a lot of money and never learned Greek. But they've always been pretty swell people and a lot of fun. Say, just who do you think you are, anyway? Young man, I like you. You may not have any blue blood in you, but at least you've got blood. Oh, how could you do <laughs> such a horrid thing, Aunt Jane? Well, Hannah, if it's of any interest to you, I think you should marry him. Huh? Marry him? After what you've said? Oh, for heaven's sake, what difference does it make how it's settled so long as it's settled? Well? Well... Don't you think that Hannah's mother and father might have something to say about it? Don't worry. They'll have plenty to say. But make up your minds if you've got any. I'm going to powder my nose. You can both end up old maids as far as I'm concerned. Oh, how could she say such things? I'm not worried about her. The point she is... She had no right to. Well, you don't have to marry me. I don't have to marry anybody. Besides, what makes her think I'd marry you? Why, I, I wouldn't any more marry you than, than, than you'd marry me. 
Do you know how much I make a week? Just wait till I get Aunt Jane home, telling me we were going to have tea while all the well, time Well, how am I was... supposed to support a wife? Steak, 30 cents a pound. Eggs, 22 cents a dozen. Butter. <laughs> what? Then I'd have your railroad fare and your hotel bills. What did you say? I said it wouldn't be fair to ask any girl to live on what I make. Oh, but I wouldn't cost much, really. I, I could learn to cook and I Of course, I could... there's always a chance. You know, they might be able to use you in the chorus. Me? On the stage? What's the matter with the stage? Oh, nothing. Only I, I can't sing or dance What's or... that got to do with being a chorus girl? Besides, you, you don't love me. Who said I didn't? Well, you certainly never said you did. Oh, for the love of Mike. Do you think I'd have wasted all this time if I didn't love you? But you never said... Well, haven't you got eyes? Can't you see that I love you? Yes, can't you see? It's written all over him. Aunt Jane, you know, you're a swell gal. I agree with you. And to prove it, I've just arranged your wedding for you. I even ordered the ring and the flowers. Aunt Jane, I, I just don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Go ahead and kiss the man. Yeah, just go ahead and kiss the man. Tim. Well, that's more like it. I was afraid I was going to have to do that for you, too. <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> Why, Hannah Adams. <laughs> We'll continue with this week's production of the Hollywood Radio Theater in just a moment. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Although Emery Alvord graduated college with an A.B. in agriculture, he wasn't completely happy. Through the work of a local missionary group, he discovered there was a great need for agricultural assistance in southern Rhodesia. So together with his wife, Alvord volunteered for the job. At first, they found the backward Bantus disinterested, the climate almost unbearable, and living conditions far from ideal. But Albert wasn't discouraged. He planted a corn crop that yielded more than the natives had ever seen. Then the Alberts built a new house for the boss of the village, not a crude hut like all the others, but constructed of bricks which they made themselves from straw and mud. When it was finished, the boss moved in with some misgivings spurred on by the local witch doctor. Gradually, however, as the Alberts' work brought bigger and better crops to the natives and improved their living conditions, the fears and superstitions of the natives were dispelled, and eventually, even the witch doctor was won over to Christian thinking. For 30 years, the Alberts remained to gain the love and admiration of the natives throughout most of southern Rhodesia. As one grateful Bantu chieftain expressed it, Cecil Rhodes founded Rhodesia, but Emery Alvord founded the people of Rhodesia. Emery Alvord did something else, too. He discovered that by helping others, you help your country. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of You're My Everything, starring Dan Daly as Tim O'Connor and Jean Crane as Hannah. heard, of course, of chorus girls who get married and go into society. But how many society girls have you heard of who get married and go into the chorus? That's exactly what our Hannah has done. To the consternation of Boston and the confusion of the chorus. Well, anyway, Hannah's very nice to look at. And the show's doing fine. It's moved to Chicago now, and tonight backstage... Tim brought someone into the dressing room. Well, go ahead, Mr. Flum. Go ahead. Tell the bride why you're here. Well, I guess I'm here to ask a question, Mrs. O'Connor. How would you like to go to Hollywood? Hollywood? Well, what would we do in Hollywood? Believe it or not, baby, Mr. Flum is a talent scout, and he seems to think this O'Connor guy might do pretty good in the cinema. You? In the movies? Well, I've caught the show several times, Mrs. O'Connor. I have a hunch this husband of yours has a real chance out there. Well, I'd better sit down. Not bad, huh? Have a little swimming pool running around the house? Some of them little old diamond bracelets climbing up and down your arm? Of course, we'll pay all expenses during the test, Mrs. O'Connor. Sure, if the worst comes to the worst, we'll always starve. Oh, I'm not worried about that, darling. You'll be as good as anybody they've got out there. Why, uh, why even better? I'll be bigger than Rudolph Valentino and Tom Mix roll into one. I'll be another Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> oh, incidentally, we're leaving Sunday night. Sunday night? Then it's all set, Mrs. O'Connor. I can wire the coast. Well, you heard him, Mr. Flum. I I guess we're going to Hollywood. (laughs) 
Okay, boys, get ready. Lights and cameras for the O'Connor test. I'm all set, Mr. Blanton. You ready for me, huh? Clear the set, everybody. Uh, Mrs. O'Connor. Uh, oh, yes? If you'll just wait over there, please. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. Are you all right, old boy? Me? Sure. Uh, you're still going to tell me what to do, aren't you? Naturally, old bean. I am a director, you know. All right, boys, we're ready. Music, camera. Just uh, stand there, Mr. O'Connor. That's it. Now then, you reach for your cigarettes. Uh, nonchalance, old boy. A uh, man of the world, you know. Okay, Bert. Okay, Mr. Blanton. <laughs> now, light the cigarette. That's it. Now, I, you toss the match away and exhale. <laughs> I said, exhale, old boy. There we are. Now, now you hear something. You listen again. Oh, it's an ominous sound. Well, react, dear boy, react! <laughs> now you turn around. You look the other way. Now the sound is gone. You're safe. They didn't find you. You inhale again. Ah, uh -uh. sophistication, sophistication, Mr. O'Connor, please. You blow the smoke out slowly. In, uh, in curls, I think. How's that, Bert? <laughs> A little more curly, if you can. <laughs> ah, good. Oh, very, 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 very good. That's it, Bert. Cut! You, you mean that's all? Dear boy, I'll tell you when you're through. Sorry. Now, do you suppose you could hold a woman in your arms? Could you kiss her? I haven't had any complaints lately. <clears throat> oh, now, let me see. Let me... Ah, uh, could I borrow you for a moment, darling? Me? Well... Oh, oh, Mr. Blanton, but I couldn't. I, oh, I... no nonsense. All you have to do is stand next to him. I'm not interested in you, only in him, his reactions. Now, uh, dear boy, may I be you for a moment? Sure, if you can stand it. <laughs> All right, now watch me. Uh, ready, Mrs. O'Connor? Oh, darling, I adore you. You're my very life. Tell me, tell me that you love me, too. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Blanton. I, I just couldn't help it. Your, your mustache. No, oh, go ahead, Mr. O'Connor. Try to make love to her. All right, Bert. Camera music. <laughs> your arms, Mr. O'Connor. Put your arms around her. Yeah, yeah, but what do I say? Cut! <laughs> Dear boy, you can say anything you wish. Motion pictures neither talk nor sing. It's how you look. Okay, uh, okay, I'm sorry. Try it again, Bert. They're rolling, boss. What? I hope I don't sneeze again, darling. What are you trying to do, wreck my career just when I'm learning how to be a great lover? Kiss her hand. The wrist. The forearm. Well, now we're getting somewhere. That's what he thinks. Whatever possessed me to fall for a dame like you, anyhow? My romantic quality. I suppose you think I like to take you in my arms like this and kiss you. I tell you I'm the luckiest guy I ever walked home with a silly little flapper who didn't have any more brains than to pick up a hungry hooker. Are you sorry I did? Sure, I'm sorry. So sorry I adore you. Oh, I adore you too, great lover. Keep going, old boy. Expression! Expression! Well, then kiss me, will you, and make Blanton happy? That's it, that's it. Cut, cut, that's all, boys. Save the lights. This is a screen test? We have your address, old boy. You'll hear from us one way or another. And thanks for your help, Mrs. O'Connor. Darling, now may I laugh? You do. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Moses. Just tell me, what am I doing here? <laughs> Well, how did they like it? Only you? sensational, honey. And to quote Mr. Mercer... Who's Mr. Mercer? Merely the head of the studio, you dumbbell. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Well, when do you start to work? Well, that's the funny part. I don't. It's you they were talking about. Me? With your push, Mrs. O'Connor, I am reliably informed that within six months, half the babies in America will be named after you. Oh, Tim, please, be serious. And what's more, Mr. Mercer personally guarantees he'll make you a star overnight. But they're crazy, Tim. Well, I won't let them do this to you. And I'm not an actress, I'm... A personality, and that's exactly what they want in pictures. You don't have to act. 
No one even hears your voice. All you do is make faces. Well, I won't do it. I won't let them treat you like this. Now, wait a minute. Nobody's doing anything to me. Why, I ought to have my head examined even thinking about going to the movies. I'm a hoofer. I can get all the jobs I want. Now, you go in there and party your nose because we're going back out to that studio and you're going to sign a contract for more dough than... Now, what's the matter? Tim, I, I can't do it. Why can't you do it? Well, well, I, uh, I'm going to have a baby. A baby? No. no you're kidding. Well, why didn't you tell me before? Well, I was afraid you might not want one. Want one? Why, I wouldn't take a billion bucks for... Uh, well, at least a million. Now, uh, where's the telephone? Uh, <laughs> Tim, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to call my folks. I'm going to call your folks. I'm going to... Hey, look. Look in the mirror, honey. Hiya, Pop. <laughs> That's me, Pop. <laughs> Hello. Hello, operator. Tim, wait a minute. Now, j- just tell me, when's it going to be, honey? Well, that's just it. I don't expect it for years <laughs> yet. Years? Well, I-, I didn't mean I was going to have a baby now. I-, I just meant I hope to have one sometime in the next few years. So you want to play, huh? Now, Tim. Tim, I, I-, I I'll meant that I... I'll teach you to play gags on me. If you tickle me, I'll... <laughs> No. No. <laughs> Don't stop. I only meant that if I got to be a movie star. Oh, no. Are you no. going to get dressed? Are you going to that studio? Stop it. No, no, I don't want I'll to be in the movie. I'll ask you just once more. Yes, yes, I'll go. Jim, stop tickling me. I'll do anything. I'll even go in the movie. Well, then, Mrs. O'Connor, let us get going. <laughs> Henry Mesa finds new star for Superior Pictures. Hannah Adams hailed by studio as Discovery of Year. Mercer the star Hannah Adams in the heart of a co-ed. Well, what are you so worried about, baby? The picture's a big success. You're a star just like Mercer said you'd be. But, Tim, the heart of a co-ed. Well, you saw it. Only 12 times. Well, it's so silly. Well, what's so silly about it? The people love it. What's silly about it? For the very first shot. Here, there I am out in the backyard hanging up a pair of bloomers. Well? Then Harold drives by and sees me. First I, I wave like this, and I wave like that, and then I pat my hair, and then I, then I wave again. And what happens? A title flashes on the screen. It says, you who? <laughs> oh, gee, really? Oh, but that next shot was far more artistic, baby. Harold gets out of the car and goes into a convulsion. Title on the screen? What are you doing, Harold? <laughs> Reaction from Harold. Title on screen, I'm doing the bunny hug, can't you see? Oh, that's one picture that won't be banned in Boston. I'll be banned. Oh, Hannah, for heaven's sakes, they think you're great. You are great. You're exactly what the public's been yelling for. Yeah, that's what Mr. Mercer keeps telling me. Well, he's right. When does the next epic start? Day after tomorrow. Superior Pictures present Hannah Adams, America's hotcha girl, in, in flaming flappers. <laughs> Think you can start without me, honey? Tim, then you've heard from Chicago? Yeah, nightclub job, two weeks guaranteed. You, you're accepting it, aren't you? Baby, we've been through all that. Oh, I know, I know. You've got to accept it. You can't just sit around here doing nothing while I'm... Uh, There's one thing I'm sure of, though. As soon as those two weeks are up, I'm coming right back. I don't think I can take it, honey. Me in Chicago and you out here. And then what, darling? Mm -hmm. Then I'll hang around till I get sick and tired of you and I'll look for another job. Two weeks somewhere else. Tim, I'm scared. You don't mean that, honey. I don't know, Tim. All I know, all I'm sure of is is how much I love you. That's my hot shot, girl. Flaming Flappers breaks box office records in key cities. Mercer signing new contract with Hannah Adams. Hotcha Adams, number one box office star of year. What about it, Lou? What are you doing with my call to Hollywood? Take it easy, Mr. O'Connor. I got the house, but your wife isn't home. Oh. You don't want to speak to the maid, do you? What do you think? I think you want to speak to Mrs. O'Connor. Hey, that sounds like my cue. Keep trying, will you, Lou? And here he is again, folks, the man you've all been waiting for, Tim O'Connor. I may be wrong, but I think you're wonderful. I may be wrong, but I think you're swell. I like your style, say I think it's marvelous. I'm always wrong, 
so how can I tell? All of my shirts are unsightly. All of my ties are a crime. If dear and you I picked rightly, it's the very first time you came along. I think you're wonderful. I think you're grand. But I may be wrong. Though your lot is sad, I am just as bad. Mine is really quite a hopeless case. Oculus advise glasses for my eyes. Without them, I can't even see your face. I may be wrong, but I think you're wonderful. Oh, good evening. May I help you? I'm Mrs. O'Connor. Mrs. O'Connor? Wait. Why, yes, you're Anna Adams. Oh, just wait till Tim knows your ears. Could you find me a table, please? Somewhere out of the way. Right this way, Mrs. O'Connor. You might be John Barrymore. You came along, I think you're wonderful. I think you're grand, but I may be wrong. Hannah, Hannah, I thought it was some kind of a gag when they... Oh, baby, am I glad to see you. When'd you get here? About half an hour ago, I, I took an airplane. Oh, darling, I just had to. Sure, sure, I know. But what happened all of a sudden? When did you decide to come? The other night, just after I talked to you. I tried to put a call through just a little while ago, and they said you weren't home. I couldn't figure where you were. I wanted to surprise you, Tim. You sure did, baby. Now, what about the new picture? Aren't you starting it? I was. What do you mean, you was? Well, I... I made them put it off. How? Oh. Well, I just told them I was going to have a baby. <laughs> Again? Well, it worked, didn't it? I'm here. What a day. Oh, it was awful, wasn't it? But I just couldn't stand it another minute, darling. I happened to be in love, do you mind? And you know, I'm, I'm not very bright about making up excuses. Well, you do all right. <laughs> anyway, why do I have to keep on being a movie star? I just want to be with you. Well, this won't go on forever, baby. You've still got that vacation coming. Maybe I can get one, too. We'll go away together. Oh, we'll never go anywhere. Either you'll be working or, or I will. It's been that way for months now. And for what? To, to build a trust fund so we can have the finest tombstones in Forest Lawn? Well, it's the only time we'll ever be together. Oh, sometimes, Tim, sometimes I wish those talking pictures would come in. Hey, yeah, what about them? Oh, they sing a song or something in the jazz singer. It doesn't mean anything. It... Just a... Just a... What is it, honey? What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing. You look pale or something. But I just feel dizzy all of a sudden. I bet you haven't eaten a thing. I'll get some hot coffee. Hey, Jack! Oh, no. No, darling, no. I, I'm fine now, honestly. Oh, now look, honey. Wait a minute. There is something I'd like. Tim, do you know what I'd really like? No, honey, what would you really like? A great big sour dill pickle. Well, then I'll get you a... Hannah... Hannah, but girls don't ask for dill pickles unless... I told you I wasn't any good at making up excuses. Holy Moses, I'm a father. <laughs> and this time she means it. We'll continue shortly with a third act of You're My Everything. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Dr. Frank Laubach kept it in mind and devoted his life to helping others. He first went to the Philippines as a missionary in 1915, and some ten years later went to live among the then primitive Moros. He asked them to teach him their language, not a syllable of which had ever been written. But Dr. Laubach found that by means of phonetic charts, he could teach the illiterate Moros how to read and write their own language for the first time. Until the Depression, money came in from Americans who'd heard of the doctor's work. And then a Moro chief gave Dr. Laubach an idea how he could continue his teaching. Through the theory of each one, teach one, each native who learned to read and write would teach another to do the same, and so on. Within seven years, each one, teach one, helped the natives rise from a 95% illiteracy to a point where over 70% of them could read and write. Dr. Laubach enlarged the scope of each one, teach one, to reach other countries. And from his work was born the World Literacy Committee, 
which has sent teams into 67 countries to spread the theory of each one teach one in over 200 different languages. In 20 years, over 65 million people learned to read and write through the system, a system which has brought the family of nations closer through education and proved most graphically that by helping others, you help your country. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of You're My Everything, starring Gene Crane as Hannah and Dan Daly as Tim. Well, a lot of time has gone by, and a lot of things have happened. For one thing, Tim and Hannah have their baby. Only at age seven, Jane's hardly a baby anymore. For another thing, Hannah's no longer in the movies. Along came talkies, and out went Hannah. But if Hannah went out, Tim's come in. Yes, Tim O'Connor is now the biggest star at Superior Pictures. Is this the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Track 29! Boys, you can give me a shine. I can afford to board the Chattanooga choo-choo. I've got my fare and just a trifle to spare. You leave the Pennsylvania station about a quarter to four. You read a magazine and then you're in Baltimore. Dinner in the diner. Nothing could be finer than to have your ham and eggs in Carolina. When you hear the whistle blowing, Eight to the bar, then you know the Tennessee is not very far. Shut up with all the crawling, gotta keep it rolling. Boo, boo, Chattanooga, there you are. Cut, cut, cut. Oh, that's it. That was great, Tim. Great. Okay, everybody, it's all for today. Stage five, tomorrow morning, eight o'clock. Stage five, tomorrow morning. Well, Tim. I hate to make predictions, but I really think we've got something here. Well, I sure hope so, Mr. Mercer. I hate to let you down. Oh, uh, before you go home, stop over in the office, will you? Sure. Oh, anything wrong, Mr. Mercer? Oh, no, 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 no. But uh, some of our big exhibitors, well, um, they're complaining about all these musicals. They're yelling for melodrama, serious stuff. And I just thought... Me? Melodrama? <laughs> well, look, <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Uh, just don't worry about it. If it's okay with you, honey, I think I'll take Janie over to the studio tomorrow. Oh? She gets such a kick out of watching me work. Oh, not that I'm a proud papa, but you should... You want her to miss school again, Tim? So she misses one day. It's not just that. Tim, you've got that child so spoiled already that all she thinks about is singing and dancing What's and... so wrong about that? Don't you want her to be like other children? To know something besides movies? Oh, Tim, please. I, I'm just not going to have her childhood spoiled. But what am I doing? Encouraging her teaching her your songs and dances. It, it just isn't right. Okay, honey, if that's the way you feel about it. Only, don't be mad at me. Come on, give me a kiss. Tim, I'm, I'm serious. Sure, baby, I know. Besides, you don't have to worry about it much longer. Did you see this in tonight's newspaper? Did I see what in the newspaper? This ad, here. It's for Will Rogers' new picture. See what it says? In big letters, this is not a musical. Well, what does that mean? Well, Mercer knows exactly what it means. He says people just don't go to musicals anymore. They're fed up. They want drama. It's a cycle, honey. A couple of years from now, maybe it'll be musicals again. Who knows? Tim, what will this do to you? I'm a cook goose, honey. And at last I can do what I've always wanted to do. I'm getting out of pictures, baby. I'm going to be a farmer. A what? Why not? We get ourselves a few acres out in the valley, build a swell little house, live the simple life. What do you say? Oh, it'll be swell for Janie. Tim, do you really mean this? Just get me out there with those cows and chickens. You won't be able to drag me back. As for these flickers, never heard of them. Oh, Tim, I'd love it. When? Well, I think we could start talking to those real estate operators, say, 
Saturday? Saturday? Oh, darling. Honestly, I'm sorry I fussed at you like that. You'd better be. I'm a gotta-be-treated right man that needs plenty of loving. Even more than plenty. Something like this? Mm -hmm. More. Give the horses a good rub down, Johnny. They're pretty hot. Yes, give the horses a good rub down, Johnny. They're pretty hot. Look, Big Shot, I'll give the orders around here. Yes, sir. Where do you suppose Mommy is? Don't you remember? She went shopping this morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, shopping. Pop, you know what I read in the Hollywood Reporter this morning? Musicals are coming back. They are, huh? Alexander's ragtime band just broke the house record at the Roxy. You don't say. Well, you can stop hinting, see? Because I am through in pictures. I'm a farmer. Some farmer. Well, whatever I am, that's what I'm going to stay, understand? Just mentioned it, Pop. And you know what I saw on Variety? Well? Bobby Grace is in the hospital. He's got appendicitis. Imagine, nine years old and he catches appendicitis. Hey, he just started his picture last Monday. What'll they do? What can they do? The kid's the star. They'll have to close down, of course. Tough on the studio, honey. You know that's the same studio where Mom and I used to work? Gee, I suppose there's no telling when he'll be out either. Eh, what are we worrying about the studio for? Come on, let's drive into town and pick out something nice to send to Bobby. Wait a minute. Yeah, Pop? While we're there, while, while we're in town... Well? I think maybe we'll stop by the studio. Something tells me you're thinking about something. Just an idea, kid. Your old man has got a sensational idea. Well, what are we waiting for, partner? Go on over the car. I'll leave a note for Mom. Oh, now, wait. Wait just a second, darling. Just catch your breath and say that over again. I'm in the movies, Mommy. I'm in the movies. That's where we've been at the studio. Darling, do you mind playing outside for just a few minutes? I'd like to talk to Daddy alone. Well, sure, Mommy. But gosh, aren't you excited? Oh, boy, wait till I tell the mom. Tim? Just a hunch I had, baby, and it worked. Henry Mercer is nuts about it. The part was for a girl, see? I mean, for a boy, and I got him to change it to a girl. And not only that, I talked him into giving me a bit part. There's an old, old colored butler in it, and that way I can be on a set with Janie. Don't you think you might have talked to me about it first? But I didn't know about it first. It was just a gamble. Baby, Mercer might have said no. You know how I feel about Jane and working in pictures. Tim, you promised me. But I thought you'd be tickled to death. After all, the picture business never did us any harm. You know as well as I what it'll mean. Long hours, rehearsals, costume fitting, posing for publicity, people chasing after her every minute. I I just don't want that for her. But Janie's got real talent. You just can't... I've tried to keep her sweet and simple like other children, but you, you just egg her on. I didn't know you were going to feel this strong about it. Gee, this puts me in an awful spot. Mercer's got the whole studio turned upside down. They're rewriting the script and it... Oh, listen, honey. L listen. Suppose we let her just make this one picture. She still has about six weeks before school starts. And if you're still unhappy, I'll tell Mercer that you and I, well, that, that we've decided she just better not go on. I'm sorry, baby. I guess I just didn't stop to think. Kim, if... If I could be sure that it'd be just this one picture... I give you my word, honey, I won't even mention it again. Cross my heart and hope to die. All right, Tim, you win. Atta girl. Kiss me. Oh, you big mug. So I thought I'd drive out and tell you the good news, Tim. They, uh... Ran a rough cut of Janie's picture last night in New York. Yeah, yeah. Every adjective in the book, Tim. A real smash. No kidding. Chip off the old block, huh? <laughs> Listen, you ham. You never could hold a candle to this kid. She's good. Ow. <laughs> well, they want her back east for the opening in Boston. That means yeah, you and but Hannah. I just hear... Well, hello, Henry. Well, Hannah, I just dropped by to tell you that everybody's crazy about Janie's picture. Oh, well. Uh, Incidentally, uh, not that money means anything to you farmers, but uh, naturally, we want to do a little better on the next one. Well, it's filthy stuff, of course. Next but... one. <laughs> Another picture? Oh, no. I thought you understood that, Henry. Understood what? But what about her contract, the options? What options? 
Tim, you promised me. Of course me. I did, baby, but no studio makes a contract without options. Then you knew all along. Oh, for the love of Pete, this is something Janie loves. It's in her blood. I'm sorry, Henry, but Jane is not going to make any more pictures. Well, this is a fine time to tell me. What am I supposed to say to New York? I don't know. Perhaps Tim has some suggestions. Well, Hannah, wait, wait, oh, Let please. her go, let her go. I've got something to say about this. You better make it good with the mood she's in. Uh, don't worry. Look, uh, you mind waiting? I'll go upstairs and settle this right now. But you deliberately lied to me, Tim, going behind my back and signing that contract. Well, what if I did? She's my child, too, you know. And fine care you take of her, making her work all week in that slush and those wind machines. Why, she almost came down with pneumonia. Pneumonia? She sneezes a couple of times and you build it up until... Oh, for the love of Mike. Well, it's not going to happen again, Tim. Even if I have to... After what? Even if I have to take her away from here. You'll take Janie nowhere. Now, wait a minute, Tim. I... Hannah, what's got into you? I used to think you had a brain, but now the way you're acting, I... Jane and I are leaving on the first plane for Boston. Oh, that's fine. You going home to Mother, huh? I haven't seen that since your last picture. Are you out of your mind? I'd like to know who's going to stop us. If you walk out of this house, Hannah, you know what it means, don't you? I know exactly what it means. So if you'll excuse me, Tim, I'm going to find Jane. Well, here are the afternoon papers, Hannah. Or have you seen them already? No, not yet, Aunt Jane. Take a look at this. Gala world premiere of Rebel in Quinolan at Royale Theater tonight. Boston Society and civic leaders to pay tribute to the daughter... Well, that's, that's very nice, isn't it? I haven't been this excited since the day you and Tim were married. Sorry. Where's our movie star? She's upstairs, taking a bath. And calm down now. We don't have to be at the theater until 8 o'clock. Any mail? No. Honestly, you'd, you'd think he'd write or wire or something. Today of all days, at, at least to Jane. I don't suppose you've written to him either. But why should I be the first one to write? Oh, for no reason. None of my business, as long as you're both so happy. If anybody calls, I'll be upstairs dressing. Oh, what a family. Well, of all things, a fine thing, I must say. The world premiere of my grandniece's picture goes on, and here we are, sitting out here in the lobby again. It's just that I'm so nervous, Aunt Jane. Gosh, all those important people in there. What if they don't like it? Don't you worry, darling. They love it. Can't you be just as nervous in our reserved seats as here? I guess so, Aunt Jane. Come on, Mother. Whatever you say, dear. It's a pretty corny picture if you ask me. Nobody asked you. Well, we'll see all of the finale anyway. That one popped the old Southern butler, Aunt Jane. He's just wonderful in that number. That, I'd say, remains to be seen. Oh, I'll never forgive either of you. Sitting in the lobby and me with an orchid. Don't you worry, little Nancy. Look at Pop, Aunt Jane. Look at him. I can't find our seat. They're right here. Now sit down. It's not so loud. down yonder to New Orleans and fetch your daddy. Really, Uncle Matt? Sure we will. Sure. Now you just close your pretty eyes and go to sleep. Because I done promised your daddy I was going to take care of you. Good night, Uncle Matt. Good night, honey. Now is what I dream about, Aunt Jane. Oh. Get on the good ship, lollipop. It's a sweet trip to the candy shop where bonbons play. On the sunny beach. Peppermint Bay. Lemonade stands everywhere. Rack a jack band fill the air. There you are, are happy land. On a chocolate bar. <coughs> See the sugar bowl. Do the tootsie roll with a big fat devil's food cake. And if you eat too much. Ooh, ooh. You'll awake with the tummy ache on the good ship. Lollipop. It's an all-night trip in the bay. You hop with this command. All aboard. All aboard. For Candyland. Come on, darling. The picture's almost over. Mr. Mercer will be waiting backstage. You're supposed to make a speech, you know. 
cornier and cornier. You better come too, Ed Jane. Uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Superior Studios, thank you for the manner in which you've received our picture. And now, it gives me great pleasure to bring you someone I'm sure that you here in Boston are very proud of, little Jane O'Connor. That's your cue, darling. Just walk out there and make your little speech. Knock them dead, sweetheart. Well, well, here it goes. Oh, you, so you think she's good, too. <laughs> Tim. I'd have gotten here sooner, baby, but I didn't get your telegram. Telegram? What telegram? I can't hear a word the child's saying out there. Why, the wire you sent me. But I didn't send any wire. Of course you sent me a wire. What's this? Well, you wanted him back, didn't you? Well, well, yes, but, but... And you've got him, haven't you? Now, wait a minute. You, too? You wanted to come, didn't you? Well, sure, but not if Hannah didn't want me. Oh, be quiet. I got both of you into this mess in the first place, and I'm going to see that you don't get out of it. Well, go on, you, you actor, you. Either hit her or kiss her. Jane's speech. We've missed her entire speech. Well, I guess I got through to us. Daddy! Hello, baby girl. Oh, Daddy, we missed you so much. Yeah, I, I know, honey. And please, I don't know how you feel, but let's don't ever go through this again. Oh, no. Don't you worry, my little missy. But from now on, the Confederates and the Yankees, they plain love each other. And there ain't nobody gonna do no seceding from nobody. Nowhere. No time? No, ma'am. In a moment, our stars will return. Sergeant Kenneth Kaiser was the first man of the 40th Infantry Division to die in Korean combat. And his memory is perpetuated today in the Kenneth Kaiser High School, the first coeducational high school in all Korea. It's a tribute, too, to the men of the 40th who wanted a living memorial to one of their heroes. The buddies of Sergeant Kaiser raised the $16,000 that went into its construction. They planned the building, and they provided much of the labor. 285 boys and girls there proudly wear the tiny enameled metal pins that are replicas of the insignia of the 40th Division. It's a dynamic, continuing memorial that has promise of making its influence felt for generations to come. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, Mr. Cummings with our stars. And our congratulations to Dan Daly and Gene Crane as they come forward for a curtain call. <laughs> well, that place certainly brought back memories, particularly the good ship Lollipop. It reminded me of Shirley Temple. You directed Shirley Temple in many of her pictures, didn't you, Irving? Yes, and that's one reason I welcomed sound to the screen. It brought a whole new wealth of talent with it. Oh, it must have been wonderful to hear as well as see great singers for the first time. Yes, and we just take it for granted today. Why, singers like Isio Pinza, Roberta, Peters, Jean Pierce, any one of them would have been a thrill. And now 20th Century Fox has starred them all in one picture. In Tonight We Sing, the story which stars David Wayne as Saul Hurok, who also discovered so much talent. Taxi, 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 taxi. Why, Dan, you're not leaving so soon, I hope. No, I just wanted to call your attention to a lot of undiscovered talent in a 20th Century Fox picture called Taxi. Oh. And just who is this undiscovered talent? Me. <laughs> now, shame on you, Dan. Your talent is very much appreciated. Yes, indeed. We don't allow any untruths like that. I believe you. Now, Irving, what's for next week? Next week, we're going to have one of the most appealing pictures I've ever seen. It's Warner Brothers' heartwarming story of the anguish as well as the happiness that an adopted baby brought to a young couple in Close to My Heart. And as our stars from the original cast, Academy Award winner, Ray Milan. And as his co-star, <laughs> lovely, talented, Phyllis Thaxter. Oh, I just love the picture, Irving. Good night. Good night. We'll be seeing you.
Radio Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings, our orchestra directed by Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to be with us again next week for another worldwide presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater, brought to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. <laughs>